Hi, I'm Jason Kelly with The Kelly Letter. Thank you for watching today. I made a video a few years back explaining how my letter uses leveraged ETFs in my 6% signal and 9% signal plans. That video was popular and people have asked since then why I don't use inverse leveraged ETFs to try to make more money on the downside and whether inverse ETFs would in fact work well over the long run as, as, as I've demonstrated the long ETFs work. The answer in short is no. The reason is that the market rises twice as often as it falls. So right away, if you're betting on the downside, the odds are against you. With leverage ETFs, the consequences of those odds going against you are magnified, of course. The media constantly points out that leveraged ETFs are not suitable for long time periods. They usually focus on the, the daily calculations of returns. They try to say that you have to be a timer in order to benefit from these funds. My previous video, which I, I referenced, is all about addressing that issue and showing that it's not true with leveraged long ETFs over some pretty substantial time periods, including multi-year time frames where buying and holding the leveraged long ETF did better than, than holding the straight index, nullifying the point they're trying to make that they're only good for day traders. Not true. But with inverse ETFs, they really are only good for traders. And I'm not a believer in trading. I believe almost everybody ends up losing money at it and it's extremely stressful and expensive and there are a lot more pleasant ways to lose money, I'll say that. <laughs> now let's look today at why I am a believer in leveraged long ETFs over extended time periods, particularly when they're combined with my volatility management and exploitation system, really, if you want to put it straight and also why you do not want to be stuck in a leveraged short ETF over a longer time period. Turn to your screen. I'm going to bring up a few charts from Yahoo Finance here. We're going to start with the year-to-date chart through May, early May of 2020. That's what I'm talking to you today. We have three lines on this chart. The dark blue thick line roughly in the middle for most of the chart is the S&P 500 via SPY. That's just a straight S&P 500 1x ETF. The light blue line spending most of its time at the bottom of this chart is SSO. That's the S&P 500 2x. The lavender line is SDS, which is the S&P 500 minus 2x. So there's your leveraged inverse ETF. Going into this year, they're all pretty flat there in the middle. But when we get to February 22nd or so, you can see a great divergence happening. That is when the coronavirus crash set in, the market started heading into its awful march, and the dark blue S&P 500 line began cascading lower. And it got all the way down to its bottom on March 23rd. And you can see during that time frame, the SSO light blue 2X ETF went down faster and deeper as you would expect and the SDS minus 2x ETF went to the moon going to a greater than 70 percent gain for the year at that bottom on March 23rd. It's obvious why people have recently had an interest in inverse ETFs particularly these leveraged ones but it's also obvious why they're not good for extended time frames. Already on this very short-term chart, we're only at the beginning of May in this year-to-date chart, the SDS inverse fund is in the negative. It's at minus 3.6% here. The S&P 500 is at minus 11.9% and the SSO 2X fund is at minus 29.7% and working its way higher. So already the long-term trend of the market, the tendency to rise, is working in favor of the leveraged long ETF holder and against the leveraged short ETF holder. Let's zoom out from this year-to-date chart to a longer one. This is a two-year chart. We have the same three funds in action here. So starting on the left back in May of 2018, you can see the dark blue SPY line just moving its way sideways. It goes down into a fairly substantial fourth quarter crash in 2018. And then we get a nice recovery into 2019 all the way up to the, the peak in, in early 2020 before the coronavirus crash. 
Now, during this two years, notice that SSO, the light blue 2x line, spent most of its time above the index. It did get down below it in the fourth quarter of 2018, but then it quickly went right back up above it and stayed above it for almost all of the time through the peak earlier this year. And even after the big crash, where it of course went much deeper than the index, it's already recovered substantially and is working its way up to surpass the index again. In contrast, look at that lavender SDS line. That's the minus 2x fund. It spends almost all of its time well below the index, and this is typical for almost any time frame. The only spike in the profitability and superior performance you, you get in that one is during that fourth quarter crash of 2018. But you had to harvest those profits early or else you spent the bulk of the chart heading down lower at a fairly steep angle and you didn't have another chance to try to make up for lost ground until this coronavirus crash, which even that didn't get you up into very substantial territory. So it's, it's a lot of work for very little pay and generally a money losing proposition to spend any extended time in these, these leveraged inverse ETFs. Let's make the point even stronger by zooming out to a five year chart. Now look at this. This tells you everything. Look how much of the time the light blue SSO leveraged long fund spends above the index. By contrast, look at the lavender SDS minus 2x fund. It spends almost its entire time on this chart well below the index. The only two times it got into profitability and, and superior performance were way back in the beginning, in 2016 and then or 2015 rather, and in the beginning of 2016. But then it headed down so substantially that even the coronavirus crash brought it up to only a minus 50% performance level. And obviously this is not a trend you want on your side for any extended period, which is why the leveraged inverse ETFs are only suitable for short-term speculation. And short-term speculation doesn't work. Keeping your eye on this five-year chart, Look at all of the wonderful, eminently usable volatility on that light blue SSO line. As the dark blue index goes up a little bit and down a little bit, this light blue line goes way up and way down. And if you have a price reactive system like the one that I run, then those higher highs and lower lows are what you can take advantage of on a quarterly basis. I want to be clear about something here. I am not calling tops and bottoms. My system is not sniffing out tops and bottoms. What it is doing is on a calendar basis reacting to where the market happens to be. Okay, so when it does catch a great bottom, as it did at the end of that fourth quarter 2018 crash, and when it catches a great top, as it did in January 2020 after the wonderful 2019, that is a coincidence. But it's a coincidence that happens again and again and again, just through rational price reaction. When the price is way up, it sells. If it's up more, it sells more. When the price is down, it, it buys. When it's way down, it buys more. That's all it does. But because of that, that greater volatility, the higher highs and lower lows of that light blue line and other ones like it, the plan runs circles around the market over an extended time period. All right, now coming back to the point of this video, the thing to keep in mind is that media is wrong, as you saw in that five-year chart, five -year chart, rather, that, that leveraged long funds are not suitable for the long haul. If you had just bought and held SSO over that five-year time frame, you would have come out well ahead of the market even after the coronavirus crash. But prior to the coronavirus crash, way ahead of the market. Whereas if you had owned that whole time the SDS minus 2x fund, you would be substantially below the market, even to the point where it's, it's great triumphant moment of rising in the coronavirus crash brought you up to only a minus 50% performance. So what do you tell your friends at the bar when they say, why don't you try those leveraged inverse ETFs? What you tell them is the market rises over time, leveraged long has the odds on its side, Leverage short has the odds against it. And that is why you use leverage long ETFs in long-term plans, preferably with a price reactive plan like mine that uses that price movement. But even in a buy and hold situation, they can work very well. The short ones do not. 
I hope you'll stick with the price reactive plan. Leverage long funds are the way to go. Leave the leverage short ones to the gamblers because that's pretty much all they are. Thanks for watching today.